Because you're on that, then I'd like to ask you this. Assume you could distinguish California. Suppose we accept your argument or accept Justice Scalia's version of your argument, and that distinguishes California. Uh, now let's look at California. What precisely is the way in which allowing gay couples to marry would interfere with the vision of marriage as procreation of children that allowing sterile companies, uh, couples of different sexes to marry would not? I mean, there are lots of people who get married who can't have children. And so take a state that, that does allow adoption uh, and say, there, what's the justification? For saying no gay marriage. Certainly not the one you said, is it? Uh, you, 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 Am I not clear? Look, you said that the problem is marriage as an institution that furthers procreation. Yes, sir. And the reason there was adoption. But that doesn't apply to California. So imagine I wall off California and I'm looking just there where you say that doesn't apply. Now, what happens to your argument? about the institution of marriage as a tool towards procreation, given the fact that in California, too, couples that aren't gay but can't have children get married all the time. Yes, Your Honor. The concern is that redefining marriage as a genderless institution <clears throat> will sever its abiding connection to its historic, traditional, procreative purposes, and it will refocus refocus the purpose of marriage and the definition of marriage away from the raising of children and to the emotional needs and desires of adults, of adult couples. Well, suppose and that a in state turn, said, Mr. Cooper, suppose a state said, um, because we think that the focus of marriage really should be on procreation, uh, we're not going to give marriage licenses anymore to any couple where both people are over the age of 55. Would that be constitutional? No, Your Honor, it would not be constitutional. Because the that's the same state interest, I would think. You know, if you're over the age of 55, you don't help us serve the government's interest in regulating procreation through marriage. So why is that different? Your Honor, even with respect to couples over the age of 55, it is very rare that both, couple, both parties uh, to the couple are infertile. And the traditional uh, uh, No, really, because if a couple, <laughs> I can just assure you, if both the woman and the man are over the age of 55, there are not a lot of children coming out of that marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, 